Welcome, fellow explorers, to another thrilling episode of our speculative evolution journey. Today, we venture into the unforgiving deserts that have emerged on the continents of Xyrophilios and Xyranthia, shaped by the cooling temperatures and weakening storms. As the planet's temperature continues to cool the massive storms and hurricanes that have supplied the continents with water begin to weaken. This leads to the formation of vast deserts on the continents of Xyrophilios and Xyranthia. The once lush landscapes are now transformed, presenting unique challenges and opportunities for life to adapt and thrive. Let's dive into the extraordinary creatures that have evolved to conquer these arid terrains. Meet the Sconophyto, resilient relatives of the Volvophyta, now adapted to the harsh deserts of Xyrophilios. These hardy terophytes have evolved thinner leaves to minimize water loss through transpiration. Their bodies, now shorter and rounder, store excess water, providing a crucial survival advantage in this arid environment. Additionally, Sconophyto has mastered the art of timing, opening their stomata at night when temperatures drop, and closing them as the sun rises. These remarkable adaptations allow them to flourish in the challenging desert conditions. As the terophytes begin to colonize the deserts, herbivores follow. The few animals that manage to colonize the deserts often converge on several key adaptations. One such adaptation is small sizes. The larger an animal is the more body heat it will produce. The Cirripodia may simply be too large and generate too much body heat to survive in the desert, however the Fidilopodia may be just small enough to survive. Even then they may still reduce their overall body size. Another way to reduce body temperature is to evolve specialized dermal structures such as dewlaps or large ears. Therefore, these Fidilopodia may evolve a dewlap-like structure under their necks, pumping it with blood to maximize heat exchange. Another key adaptation for living in the desert is specialization for traveling long distances. Therefore, these forms may evolve longer legs with wider feet to stop them from sinking into the sand. The final adaptation these desert creatures will make is internal, they may evolve larger and more developed kidneys to conserve as much water as possible. These adaptations will allow these desert fidelopodia, which we'll call carpakipards to survive in the harshest environment on Verdantara. They will grow up to 4 feet tall and live up to 8 years. In the deserts of Xyrophilios, the Ipnodont emerges. Descendants of the Cintodonts, these secretive organisms have evolved a unique survival strategy. Similar to estivation on Earth, Ipnodonts bury themselves in the sand during unfavorable conditions, only to emerge months later. Retaining their scavenging behavior, they reside near the desert plains threshold, showcasing their ability to adapt to the challenging desert environment. Now we turn to see the deserts of Xyranthia. A unique terophyte inhabits the deserts of Xyranthia. Descendants of the cladophyte these odd plants have converged on many of the same adaptations as the Sconophyto, such as opening and closing their stomata in accordance to night and day. However, they have also evolved a bowl-like structure which they use to capture as much water as possible. Tiny hairs line the inside of this bowl collecting any evaporating water. These hairs will also be found around their stomata for the same reason. These unique terophytes will be called the tripophytes, and they will grow in abundance around oases. As the oases populate with life, a new herbivore evolves. There are many ways that desert animals on Earth avoid overheating. One such adaptation is burrowing. These new forms descended from the Scantopelma will create burrows near oases, feeding on the roots of the tripophytes. Their large claws which were used by their scavenging ancestors to rip open bodies, will now be used to create underground tunnels. These creatures, which we'll call the Komonichi, grow up to two feet tall and live for up to five years. They showcase the versatility of adaptation in the evolving desert ecosystem of Xyranthia. Yet another descendant of the Scantopelma will become a desert scavenger, with their already heightened sense of smell becoming even more powerful. To avoid overheating these creatures will travel at night, but this will require some adaptations to their eyes. At this point all descendants of the Aquilopods have simple eyes that can't rotate in their sockets 
but these creatures will have much more developed eyes suitable for night vision, some species may even evolve a tapetum lucidum. These creatures will have a long body and long legs for traversing wide areas of desert every night, and wide feet to avoid sinking into the sand. We will call these nocturnal scavengers the Vlepapelma, and they will grow up to 4 feet tall living for up to 8 years. Lastly, descendants of the Natharios may evolve to become wandering herbivores moving from oasis to oasis. These creatures will have long legs and a long body to increase stride length, and wide feet to avoid sinking into the sand. They too will make adaptations to their eyes, evolving a glossy flap that can close over the eye to defend it from sandstorms. We will call these long-distance creatures the Epinomarios, and they will grow up to three feet tall living for up to seven years. Unfortunately, yet again the island continent of Zirakor is too small and too close to the equator to harbor any deserts. From the resilient Sconophyto to the nocturnal Vlepapelma, each creature tells a story of survival in the evolving deserts of Verdantara. As the continents continue to change, what new challenges and adaptations await these remarkable inhabitants? Join us in the next episode as we return to the oceans to see how life has been evolving since the Pyronova eruption. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share your thoughts. Thank you all for your marvelous suggestions, see you in the next episode.